Hello, in this video we look at random vectors and random matrices. Now in many of the videos I've been doing in multiple linear regression, I kind of assume that you have this background, which may not be the case for all viewers. And so I'm going back and I'm going to describe these and, and how I manipulate them or how they're manipulated. And, and I'll have a video to point back to for those that need a, a background reference. So let's let W, Y, and Z be random vectors. Let X be a random matrix. Let A and B be constant matrices. And they can be any dimension such that addition and multiplication works. And so I'm not going to really explain what the dimensions are. We'll kind of touch upon it in some of these derivations and properties. So the expected value of a random vector Y it can be thought of it this, the expected value, and the vector is y1, y2, to yn, and it's really the expected value of each component, and the expected value of, say, y1 is mu1, and then all the way to mu n, but this is a vector of constants. Let's just call it mu, and so this is the mean vector, and this is how you do the, the expected value of a random vector. Now the expected value of a random matrix X, now this does not have to be a square matrix. It can be an M by N matrix. And the way you take its expected value is component wise. You do each component. Okay. And then it is whatever it is. Now, if we look at the expected value of a constant A, times a random vector that is this okay so this product is this right you take the first row times this product which is this and you know so they're added and all the way to the nth row times this vector so notice that this you know this for this multiplication to work it has to have n columns because this is n by one vector, but the number of rows does not have to be, you know, the same. So it's M. Well, this is a vector, and how do we take the expected value of a vector? We do it component-wise, so it's expected value of this component all the way to the expected value of this component. But how do we take, in scalar form, how do we take expected value it's a linear operator, so we take the expected value of each term, which is what this is, and then since A is a constant, it comes out of the expected value, right? So plus and then constant expected value, and that's for each row. But this can be thought of as these constants times this vector of expected values, right? So if we were to multiply this times that first row, we're going to get this. And it's the same for each row. So this vector times that row, we're going to get this. But wait, this right here is just A. And this is the expected value of the Y vector, right? So this can be thought of as A times the mean vector. So really, when, when you look at this matrix product, that since A is a constant, it can really come out front. And that's what we're saying here. Now, the expected value of A times Y plus B times Z. Now, the dimensions of all this have to be right, so you can first multiply and then add. But then, since expected value is a linear, op linear operator, we take it into this and then plus the expected value of this. But A and B are constants, so they come out front, and we get this property. The expected value of a constant is always just a constant. Now let's start looking into some scalar properties of covariance. So this is not vectors or matrices. So Y1 is actually the first component of that Y vector, and Z1 is the first component of Z, um, right? Not a vector. These are scalars. So the covariance, by definition, is this. It's expected value 
of y1 minus its mean times z1 minus its mean. That's the definition of covariance. Now, when we take the covariance of a constant times y and a constant times z1, this covariance, it, it's the same definition. So it's a1 minus the expected value of a y1, right? That's it. And then b z times its expected value or its mean. But this expected value, A is a constant, so you can actually factor it out of both, and B is a constant, so you can factor it out. And we're left with this. So the A comes out, and the B comes out. Since these are numbers, it doesn't matter the order that you multiply, so I just put this first. Now the expected value comes in, but those are constants, so they, they go out of the expected value. But that's just the expected value, or the, the covariance of Y1 and Z1 right you know so you bring out the constants and it and it's the covariance of what's left now since these are all numbers it's usually written like this you take the b and put it in front but i wrote it like this for when we get into matrix covariance of matrices so here's another property the covariance of y1 and y1 is this expected value of y1 minus the mean same here so that's really the expected value of y1 minus its mean quantity squared but that's the definition of variance so the variance of y1 remember that's a scalar is the same as the covariance of y1 and y1 okay and this is and, and the sum is true so here if we take the covariance of the sum of the y's and the sum of the z's, now I only went from 1 to 2 to make it my example easier, which is this, y1 plus y2, z1 plus z2. So this covariance, by definition, is this value, expected value of this value minus its mean, this value minus its mean. But this expected value goes into both of those, and then we can kind of regroup them. So this, can, we can take y1 minus the mean of y1 plus y2 minus the mean of y2, and we can do the same over here. Regroup them, z1 expected value minus expected value of z1, z2 mean. And then the product of all this, you take this times this, this times that, that times this, this times that, and it ends up, and then, and then the expected value goes into each of those. But really, that's just the, the covariance of y1 and z1. y1 and z2. Covariance of y2, z1. Covariance of y2, z2. But we can generically write this as the double sum of the covariance of yi, zi. Right? So the, it's like the, the, the summations come outside of the covariance. And, well, that is true in general, too. If we go from 1 to n and from 1 to m, those come out, and it's the covariance of yi, zj. Now, this is the definition of the covariance between vectors. So y is a vector. And W is a vector. These are scalars up here. So it's expected value of Y minus its mean. Remember, this is an N by 1 vector. And this is actually an M by 1 vector. Now, this one is Y, you know, the W vector minus its mean transpose. So this right here. So this could be an M by 1 matrix. And this is an N by 1 matrix. But because of this uh, vector product, we're going to get an N by M matrix, right? It's the first row times first column, first row, second column, first row, so the, you know, matrix product. So we end up with this. So the first row and the first column, remember it's transposed, we get this. And then all the way, the first row, nth column, and this matrix becomes this. Now, when we take the expected value into this matrix, we do it component-wise, right? But the expected value of this is the covariance between y1 
and W1. And this one, you know, all the way down to the covariance of Y1, WM, and then covariance of Y N W1, covariance of Y N W M. So it's an N by M matrix when we take the covariance between two vectors. Okay. So now the variance of Y, the vector Y, can be thought of and is equal to the covariance between these two vectors. But when you take the covariance of vectors, it creates a matrix. So this is n by 1 and this is n by 1. So we're going to get an n by n matrix. And it's the covariance of each of the components. So this is the covariance of y1 and y1, which is the variance of y1. And covariance and covariance. And actually, the diagonal elements are all variances. And all these others are, are covariances. And so we've just created the variance covariance matrix for this vector. Now the covariance of a constant times y and a constant times z is by definition it's this. So it's a y minus the mean, b z minus its mean. Remember the transpose because it creates a matrix. But here, you know, the expected value, that's a constant, so it comes out front. And we can left factor out that A. And the same here, Z or B and B can be left factored out. But remember, it's inside that transpose. And so that's, that's what this is. So we left factor out an A. And we left factor out a B, but it's a transpose in this second one. Now, when we take the transpose to this and to this, they switch places and we get this. Now A and B are constants in this expectation. So when we bring this expected value in, that A comes out and the B transpose comes out and we get this. But this center part, the expected value of this is actually just the covariance between Y and Z. So the formula is if we have a constant times a random vector, constant times a random vector, the A comes out front, and the B goes out back transposed. And then we just look at the covariance between Y and Z. And this is used quite a bit in my videos. Now, here, last page, <clears throat> if we look at the variance of a constant times a random vector, to me, it's, easy, it's easier to remember this formula if I think of it as a covariance between AY and AY. Because the formula for this means the A comes out front and this A goes out back transposed, which is this. But this covariance of Y and Y is the variance. So this is the formula, and that's used quite a bit. Now the variance of a uh, constant times a random vector plus a constant vector. <clears throat> I always say, you know, you can ignore the constant in, a, in the variance, and this is why. So when we take this vector times its mean, you know, by plus a, and since we're looking at the variance, it's, you know, the byA minus its mean. And don't forget the transpose because we're creating a matrix. But this expected value goes into both of those. The expected value of constant is the same. So we have A minus A. So it actually goes away. In the same way here, we have A minus A. It goes away. So we're left with this. It's just uh, BY minus the mean of BY. BY minus the mean of BY. But that's just the variance of BY. Right? So the constant goes away. It doesn't, it doesn't factor into the variance. Now, here is a property that we're going to look at quite heavily when we get to multiple uh, or multicollinearity. So we have a random vector minus its mean transpose. Random vector minus its mean. When it's in this way, remember this is a vector and it's transposed, and this is a vector. So it's actually, you can think of it as the dot product, or vector multiplication. So it's actually, we're finding the length of this vector in the standard inner product, as our uh, 
inner product, yeah, as our measure. So then, and so this inner product becomes the sum, right? First component times first component, second, second. So that's where the sum, and it's, now the expected value is a linear operator, so it comes in to this expected value. But this is the variance of each component. So it's, it's the sum of the variances of yi. And in multicollinearity, we're going to study the sum of the variances of our beta parameters, beta or our least squares beta parameters. Okay, so this result will be important when we examine multicollinearity and multiple regression. And of course, more detail when we get to that video. But here's also another way to think about this, right? So here, we're, we're taking the expected value again. It's the same setup. But this time, let's multiply this together. So to do that, the transpose goes into this and it goes into that. So then you take y transpose times y, y transpose times its mean, minus the mean transpose y, and then plus that squared. So now let's take the, well actually we can, yeah, take the expected value in. We get this, this, that, that. Now, um, ex the expected value is a constant. So when we take this expected value, we look at this, expected value of y transpose, and that comes out of it. We get this. Same way here, that comes out of this expectation, so it goes in. And these are just constants, so we get that. Now notice we get plus and minus that, so those go away. And then here, the expected value of y transpose, so that's a row vector, and then you bring in the expected value, and it's all still a row vector. But isn't that the same if, if we take the expected value of y, which is a column, and then transpose it? it you know, so this becomes this, right? And the, and the expected value of y vector is the mean, so this. Right, but this we said was the sum of the variances. So this implies, right, so this is equal to the sum of the variances. So we can take that over, and then the expected value of y, you know, y transpose y is equal to this mean vector plus the sum of these variances. And this is also going to play a part in multicollinearity, because these will be these will represent the least squares estimates of the betas. And it's going to equal the length of the beta vector plus the sum of these variances. And we want to minimize this. But in multicollinearity, this gets inflated. So we have to take some countermeasures. Well, anyway, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.